Thank you very much. Um, special thanks to Scott Pentel and the great LSI team for creating this amazing ecosystem. Um, also want to send a special shout out to Paul Grant and the, the MedTech Innovator Group. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for MTI. So thank you very much, Paul. And uh, a very good morning to all those viewing from California. Uh, my name is Devin. Very excited to be here. Um, we've got a great story to share with you. The Endolux story um, started with our two co-founders that are practicing urologists. Um, they were called in in the middle of the night during the residency um, to do a two-minute procedure. It took their hospital two and a half hours to gather all the equipment needed to do a two-minute procedure in the middle of the night. And that was really their inspiration to say, wait a minute, why do we have to have CART come down from the operating room? Why do we need a CISTA set to come over from the urology clinic? Why hasn't any of this been miniaturized and modernized so that we can make it portable and easier for everyone to use? And that's how this whole company started. So I'm excited to share with you the, the journey that we're on. Uh, it all started back in the mid-80s. As all of us know, minimally invasive surgery uses a, a video stack. There's thousands of these stacks around the world, but nothing's really evolved from those stacks. Um, it still is antiquated, old video towers. Um, there's only three or four major players in the market, and there hasn't been any disruption until now. MIS has uh, proliferated through almost every surgical specialty. Um, the importance of this chart is that MIS um, has continued to grow, um, but every single procedure that's done for minimally invasive surgery requires a camera. And therefore, the total available market is huge. And as I mentioned earlier, there's only three or four key players, multinationals, that are providing the $6 billion market. So Endolux is really excited to come to market and disrupt that. <clears throat> Our ecosystem um, started with the camera platform, all-in-one wireless portable platform. Um, we quickly evolved to have a back-end um, digital solution where all of our images are uploaded, and I'll share that with you. We're on an exciting pathway to have some clinical support built into the camera head that no other cameras have, and we have a whole line of disposable scopes that will be integrated into the platform. Uh, we're very proud to announce that last year uh, we were awarded a medical design award um, in 2021. Um, our platform is very simple. It has an advanced camera a charger, and a receiver that can connect to any monitor in any clinical setting. Disruption, the true definition of disruption, right? Better technology at a lower price. Um, so the traditional players sell their carts at anywhere from sixty dollars to $100,000. Our entire platform is $15,000. So we're really primed to disrupt that $6 billion marketplace. The back-end cloud service is a very important part because this is what's enabling all of our clinical decision support. So immediately after a case is finished, all of the images, videos, and patient data are immediately uploaded to the receiver, sent to the cloud, and can connect to any EMR or patient charting system. Simultaneously, any clinician can then download that and share it with the, the patient to explain to the patient what happened during their clinical experience. That all that data then supports our, our artificial intelligence journey, um, and, and we have four key phases and a very focused approach. Our friends at Active Surgical next door just explained their lane assist theory, and it aligns perfectly with our lane assist theory. We want to provide additional data for the clinicians to make good clinical decisions. So we're not trying to replace the surgeon. We're not a robotic company. We're not trying to provide any additional data that they couldn't think of. We're trying to just to provide it at the real time, at the right time. Just like lane assist, just like collision avoidance does in any car today. And so we have very specific uh, proof of concepts that we've already accomplished. So right after the pandemic, we were able to cha uh, train our camera, the first camera to ever be able to identify where it is in the anatomy. Pretty amazing for a camera platform to know where it is. This is a urology example in the urethra. The next step is structure, uh, structure identification. So now our cameras can identify, just like Tesla can identify and differentiate between a cat and a tree and a dog, our camera can identify the different structures in the anatomy, which takes us on the pathway to um, anatomic configuration. So now we've trained our neural net um, down to the polygonal level so that it can uh, it determine healthy tissue, non-healthy tissue, and what type of uh, therapy needs to be provided is our final step. But we know that there's more data that could be provided. So we're really excited. We've partnered with an innovative company um, that has patented technology called Synopic, and we're bringing our two platforms together. Why is this important? Synopic has a, a, a unique lens that fits on the end of any endoscope or laparoscope um, that provides additional data through their neural net 
um, to the clinicians at, at real time. An example, <clears throat> so real time spatial and depth information. What their lens can do is provide real time measurements that have never been provided before and real time depth information that has never been provided before. And so combining our two technologies, we'll be able to provide, provide clinicians insights and clinical intelligence that no other camera platform can do. We're going to combine our two um, hardware technologies and our neural net to allow this to happen. We also know that we have to be able to um, deploy these technologies in, in a usable format. So we have a whole roadmap on how to deploy the scopes um, and embed the different technologies. Right now, our camera attaches to any scope on the market, completely agnostic, which is wonderful. Um, and in the future, what we're working on with Synopic is embedding their scope into the tip, using our camera head on, on, as the processor, and eventually getting to a disposable situation. What does all this mean? What all does all this tech do? Well, at the end of the day, what it really does, it is allows the clinicians to use different therapies in a much better way. So the therapy companies are very excited. So that's a whole nother evolution of our company is working and partnering with therapy companies. These are some urology examples of different therapies that are very common in the urology marketplace. Let's take a quick look at Eurolift. Eurolift is a market leader in BPH treatment. And right now, um, the Eurolift, when it's being used, the clinician goes in and all, it has, all the clinician has is a, a visual aspect of, of the anatomy. What we can do with our technology is provide these overlays and additional data that they never had before. So we can tell the clinician how far are they from the bladder neck. Why is that important? Because if they're too close to the bladder, when the Eurolift's deployed, the clip's going to go into the bladder. We can tell them what their angle is using our sensors in the camera head. Why is that important? Because if their hands are too low, they're going to get a bone strike. So all these different data that's now available because of our camera is going to provide for better clinical outcomes. <clears throat> we can also provide them before and after data using our artificial intelligence. This is an image of the prostate, left and right lobe, before the procedure. After the procedure, our AI can process that and now tell the clinician and the patient, hey, look, you had a very uh, successful outcome from your Eurolift procedure. Also in stone therapy, another one of our partners, Dornier, very excited to work with us. We can identify what type of stone they're looking at, which will then provide them information for their laser system as to how much power is needed to destroy that stone. Again, none of that information is available today until we've come out to market. <clears throat> the platform is available and, and usable in all specialties. We're hyper-focused right now in urology. That's our beachhead. That's where we're going to have our first successes. We have a very typical razor, razor blade model, um, a capital purchase with wonderful back-end subscription opportunities, and our IP is fantastic. The original platform has over <coughs> excuse me, 26 indications, and we filed for um, a very unique patent application melding our AI with our hardware. Um, we're currently um, um, FDA Class 1 exempt. Um, thanks to the ecosystem here at LSI, we've worked with many partners here um, on our new um, breakthrough device technology designation and also with CMS for our TPT um, pass-through code. <clears throat> Finally, our takeaways, huge available market. We, our value proposition is we have an all-in-one platform um, that's wireless and portable. We're going to have immense data in our cl clinical decision support model. We have a wonderful team. I want to thank Dr. Patel who's here. I wish Dr. Dr. Zhao was here and then both Luis and Scott with tremendous uh, knowledge in the industry. Our clinical advisory board helps us around the globe, and it's been absolutely um, um, fantastic to work with. Phil Ratcliffe, many of you know, um, just took a president and CEO job at GE. He had his first hole-in-one last year at this conference, um, so we wish he is here. And then Josh DeFonzo um, has been a fantastic help from Lux. So that's Endolux. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and look forward to sharing our, our journey with you all along the way.